There was a lot of feedback on the economy in Red Dead Online during the beta's first phase before the week one hotfix, and it was mostly anecdotal. Many said it took way too long to earn money. Some said the pace was good because it's designed to be a long-term grind and we shouldn't expect to unlock everything in the first week. The problem is that people's opinions will vary with how much time someone has or is willing to spend in the game and how rewarded that person feels grinding for hard-to-get items in-game. It can be hard to judge how a grind-heavy game will feel in the long term unless you've spent a lot of time in-game. So I want to try to put this in perspective for people who haven't spent too much time grinding in Red Dead so we can see how the game would feel in the long term in its initial beta state and after the changes to the economy. So the ways you make money in Red Dead Online are through versus modes, story missions, free roam missions, which are called stranger missions, uh, treasure maps and selling animals to the butcher. I'll go through the rewards for each of these. The story missions give a generous payout the first time you complete them. I didn't keep track of the total payout since I was buying things between missions, but they'll earn you at least $500. This is enough to get you started with a couple of items if you make sure you buy useful items. After that, they initially paid from $0 to $10 depending on the mission and time you take to complete it. This was roughly doubled in the week one hotfix. Uh, there's a time delay before you can start another story mission. You can play story missions back to back if you match make, but you won't get to choose the mission you want to play. Free roam missions, which are called stranger missions, have similar payouts. Around about $1.50 to $8 depending on the completion time. This was also approximately doubled in the week one hotfix. I spent about an hour doing stranger missions. It took me roughly three minutes to travel to another stranger once the last finished. When I got there faster, I couldn't activate it anyway and had to wait a couple of minutes for it to be available. Uh, if you do stranger missions back to back with no free roaming in between, you earned roughly $30 an hour pre hotfix, $60 an hour post hotfix, uh, 16 nuggets and 1900 XP per hour. Treasure maps are very rewarding, but they're very inconsistent. I've received random amounts from these for uh, from $50 to $200 and a random amount of gold nuggets ranging from under 50 to a little over 100. You get one during the online tutorial section and one in the mail every five levels starting at level 10. Other than that, you find them by looting bodies from gang hideouts. This is where the inconsistency is. Some people have reported getting a treasure map after doing a few hideouts, others have done 20 to 30 and never found a map. Also, hideouts spawn randomly at set locations, so the most consistent way to find hideouts is to ride around past known spawn locations until you see one spawn. Selling animals was by far the most profitable activity before the week one hotfix, and it probably still is. The downside is the XP gain is very low and you don't receive any gold nuggets. Some people were getting $100 to $250 with these specific fishing routes or by doing laps of valentine and killing and skinning any pigs, you sh uh, pigs and sheep you see. I personally found this was inconsistent because of despawning issues depending on the servers. Uh, the week one hotfix nerfed sale prices for the fish and livestock but it's still possible to reach $100 or more per hour with these myth methods or with efficient hunting. Now, let's look at the money gain over time and how long you can expect to play before you gain access to certain items. So I wrote down how much I earned over time from Stranger Missions. Doing it in a group doesn't seem to change the pay and doing missions faster won't earn more rewards uh, because they scale with time spent in the mission. On average, I earned $26.95 per hour from rewards only. I worked out how long you will have to spend in missions to buy various items and here are some examples. To revive your horse with the $9.50 horse reviver costs 21 minutes worth of stranger missions. To feed your horse with $4 oat cakes costs 9 minutes worth of stranger missions. Basic consumables that refill stamina and dead eye, cocaine gum, 11 minutes, chewing tobacco, 13 minutes, fast travelling to your camp, costs half an hour's worth of missions. The first available long range gun, the $360 bolt action rifle, costs 13 hours of back to back stranger missions. Most expensive gun, $1000, the Mauser pistol, 37 hours. Best horse, the $950 Missouri Foxtrotter, 35 hours of non-stop stranger missions. 
Of course, this is so unrewarding that nobody even attempted to make money from missions and versus modes had similar payouts on average. So the only thing you could do for good money was hunt or fish at the expense of earning no XP or gold. To hunt efficiently, you need the $360 bolt action for larger animals and the $72 varmint rifle for smaller animals. To fish effectively, you need the fishing rod which unlocks at level 14 and the lures that are locked to level 31 unless you spend gold on each lure, which most people did. If you are efficient with your hunting, bringing back more than one carcass each trip, you can get $100 or more per hour. This will earn you roughly one horse reviver every five minutes and if you don't spend money on anything else, you can afford the best gun or horse in only 10 short hours of non-stop hunting. If you had gone online and followed the most efficient hunting, uh, sorry, the most efficient fishing method, you can earn enough for the Mauser or Foxtrotter in five hours if you spend the entire time fishing without getting distracted. But of course, one gun or horse in Red Dead is worth more than five hours of consistent work, so fish values were reduced in the week one economy hotfix. But it's okay, because in the week one hotfix, Rockstar listened to the feedback and fixed the economy. We just had to have faith that Take-Two Interactive have our best interests in mind when balancing an in-game economy. Weapon prices were reduced and money earned from versus modes, stranger missions and story missions were roughly tripled. Versus modes still seem to, on average, pay the same as missions since they were roughly increased by the same amount. Doing the new stranger missions back-to-back -back earned me around about $85 an hour, uh, bringing them much more in line with the hunting rates. With the new weapon prices this reduces the grind time by a lot but it's still debatable. Horse Reviver dropped from 21 minutes worth of missions to just under 2 minutes. Basic consumables are 2 to 5 minutes worth each. Fast travel still costs 10 minutes worth of missions. Uh, bolt action dropped from 13 hours to 2.5 hours and the Mauser dropped from 37 hours to 7 hours. The Missouri's price didn't change, so it only dropped from 35 hours to 11 hours. With good hunting rates, you can get the bolt action in under 2 hours and the Mauser in 5 hours. Hunting while travelling between stranger missions can increase the money you earn from stranger mission grinding by something like 20 to 30, uh, sorry, 20 to $50 per hour, depending on your luck and location, which will give you a middle ground between the hunting money rates and the mission rates while still getting XP from missions. Something to keep in mind when looking at these numbers is that most people don't spend their entire playtime grinding. It'll be some combination of messing around with friends, getting into fights, shopping, missions and hunting. Uh, some people really like grinding and may spend two and a half hours of a three hour session grinding missions. Some people might only spend one hour out of three grinding. So when I talk about hours spent to earn something, that is how many hours you spend doing that activity if there are no outgoing expenses. Every dollar you spend while trying to grind your way up to a high value item adds another 30 seconds to a minute onto how long it will take you to reach that item. So how does this grind compare to GTA Online? Well the most expensive supercar in GTA was a million dollars. In Red Dead the most expensive high end horses are $950. If you were fast grinding uh, contact missions in the early days of GTA Online, you could earn $100,000 to $200,000 per hour. Just over six months into GTA Online, the missions were rebalanced so you could no longer complete high paying missions as fast as possible for more profit. They now give a higher payout the longer you spend in mission. If you do a mission fast, you're punished by getting a reduced payout. This makes it easier for them to see how much time their players need to spend in-game to afford in-game items. And they've had years of experience at this. Red Dead Online's missions also used this time-based system. GTA missions with this system would pay roughly $7,000 for 3 minutes up to $20,000 for 15 minutes. Red Dead missions after the economy hotfix have been paying roughly $7 for 3 minutes up to $18 for 15 minutes. Going by these comparisons, GTA and Red Dead Online seem to have almost identical rewards if a dollar in Red Dead Online is the same as $1,000 in GTA, give or take 50 bucks. With this in mind, let's compare some of GTA's prices when the game first released to Red Dead Online's prices for similar items. 
A lot of clothes in GTA were less than $1,000 each, with the most expensive only reaching up to $30,000. Red Dead's clothes mostly range from $25 to $80 up to $150. GTA hairstyles were one to 3000 Tattoos were in the thousands up to 20000 Red Dead's hairstyles cost from $8 to $25, and some are only purchasable with premium currency. Same goes for the clothes. Um, the most expensive car in GTA cost a million dollars, and all non-vanity upgrades cost around 240000 The most expensive horse in Red Dead is 950 and the best saddle with all performance upgrades costs around $344. Weapons in GTA ranged from $5,000 to $30,000 for the better guns, with attachments mostly coming in hundreds or up to 2000 for some. Uh, <coughs> weapons in Red Dead range from $200 to $600, with attachments costing $60 to $80. Relative to mission rewards, pretty much everything costs more in Red Dead Online. Well, hey champ, hold up there, kid. Don't you know this is just a beta? Well, in the first week, I would have said, sure, things could change, we'll have to wait and see. But what have they done so far with the beta? Well, with the week one hotfix, they listened to the community and fixed the economy. Do you honestly think Rockstar weren't aware of how out of line prices and mission payouts were? Do you really think they set stranger mission rates to earn $2 for a three minute mission alongside hunting rates that could earn you quadruple the money, then priced guns at $400 to $1,000 and said, this looks about right. Do you think that looked like an honest attempt to make a balanced economy? Then after listening to the community, they increased mission rates so they're more in line with hunting rates that have remained the same since the single player launched over a month before, and coincidentally, the new mission rates line up almost exactly with the mission rates set for GTA Online four and a half years ago. I guess any grind would feel generous after playing the first week of the Red Dead beta, even if it is as bad or worse than GTA Online. But there has only been praise for the economy changes since the first week hot fix, so I guess people feel like they've been listened to. The only other things uh, they've done during the beta are a couple of stability patches that improved but didn't fix much. And they added premium currency microtransactions. So I can't carry more than three outfits with my bugged horse bag upgrade, but I can buy a leather duster for $15 worth of gold bars. My horse bonding level resets to one every time I play the game, but I can still buy a premium horse for $21 worth of gold bars. Stranger missions always bug out and fail to start, but if I can't afford a $500 item, I can spend $10 worth of gold bars instead. Random disconnects can roll back minutes of travelling, but at least I can buy a fast travel post at my camp with only 56 Australian dollars worth of gold. And speaking of the gold, how do Red Dead Online's microtransactions compare to GTA Online's? Well, for $100 US, you can get an $8 million shark card or 350 gold bars. When spending gold bars as a replacement for cash, they are worth 25 Red Dead Online dollars each, which makes the 350 gold pack worth 8750 Keep in mind how much more expensive purchases are in Red Dead. So 8750 will get you a lot less than $8 million would have in GTA. But in relation to grind rates, the microtransactions are almost the same as in GTA. Well, for the US at least. The $8 million shark card and the 350 gold pack are both $100 in US, but in the AU store, the $8 million GTA card costs $108, and the 350 gold bars will cost me $150 Australian dollars. I don't know why they would do this, and as an Australian, I'm used to getting screwed on game prices, but this seems dodgy enough to be worth mentioning. So... In summary, Red Dead Online seems to be on a worse track than GTA Online in terms of grinding, with premium currency only items on top to add another layer of shit onto the already shitty microtransactions. I'm just sick of seeing people praising Rockstar and Take-Two for listening to community feedback 
when the first week of the beta was just mental conditioning to make an already calculated grind seem less shit than it is. Well, we got some money. And with the train job, <coughs> well, we got a whole lot of money. Come on. Everything is coming together exactly as I planned. 